Hello and welcome to the Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe. In today's episode, let's create an art journal page. And I will be working in my A4 size art journal. And since I have in my head uh, this uh, vague idea about a unicorn, I'm choosing background papers in traditional unicorn colors. So pastels, uh, pinks, sage greens, purples, I'm tearing strips of uh, all the papers which go with this color scheme. I am using this big Craft Sensations paper pad, which is called exactly that, Pastels. And I will be gluing all the strips down using liquid gel medium. It works well with these thick papers as it soaks into the paper easily and it's easy to glue the paper strips down to the page. And I'm doing it also in the spirit of using up my stash of background papers. I am, as you see here, turning the torn strip so that the torn edge is facing up because it is more interesting than the very straight edge of my uh, paper pad page. So I'm gluing the strips down without any particular order, just making sure that I don't have two strips the same next to each other. The inspiration here is rainbow, which you usually see in the drawings or paintings of unicorns, but I'm not doing it literally, so I'm just taking the pastel strips and gluing them down in random order. So let's call this a um, rainbow inspired page. And at the bottom where I didn't tear enough strips, I'm just cutting the excess of the existing strips and gluing down on the bottom of the page. So this is finished and it needs to dry. And when the glue is dry, I am using a simple white gesso to calm down a little bit the background. I know it's not very bright, but still I want to unite the colors a little bit to make them sink into background a little bit more. And it will add additional interest. It will not be uh, just stripes, but there will be something else going on in the background. I'm using a palette knife to spread the gesso lightly over the uh, paper strips. And then I will let the gesso dry and we'll be ready for the next step. And the next step is this uh, lovely candy <laughs> washi tape. So I went through my collection of washi tapes and took out uh, the washi tapes which resemble in color the colors that are already on the page. So I found this perfect uh, teal blue and I'm since it's a little bit wider I'm tearing it horizontally and gluing down the torn strips absolutely randomly and I also used this very wide washi tape it is uh, rather brown but there are some specks of teal and pink in it so I think it goes very well with the page and I'm somehow trying to keep the darker washi tape on the bottom part of the page and the lighter color on the top uh, just to somehow divide the page. And again I repeat the previous step. I'm going over the page with gesso and palette knife. And this way I unite the stripes and you see that the page is getting more interesting. It's not just horizontal stripes anymore, but more interesting now, more exciting to look at. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> so now we let the gesso to dry and we are ready for the next step. And this will be stenciling. I am using this clarity stencil to add some interest because I decided to find the stencil which has sort of still this horizontal uh, designs. So I still want to keep everything in horizontal lines, but they are a little bit wavy. So, so although being horizontal, they will still add some additional interest to the page. At least this is how I planned it in my head. I am using um, the uh, archival inks. I try always to use uh, archival inks on my art journal pages because then I do not need to worry about what I will put 
on top of them in the next layer. I know that they will not run. I do not have a big selection of archival links, but I managed to find the blue, purple, orange and yellow. And I'm trying to divide the colors. I'm using the blue and the purple on the bottom part of the page and the yellow and orange on the top part. Again, repeating the same idea as before that I want to keep the bottom part of the page slightly different from the top part so that it's not so that it's not monotone so that it's not boring see how different the page looks now I'm still repeating the horizontal lines the background has become more interesting to look at now so a little bit more touch of the orange on the right side of the page yeah, took the wrong brush there. <laughs> and I think that should be enough, yes. And then I decided enough with the horizontal lines, so I took a bubbles stencil, totally different shape, round shape, and I'm using texture paste to add bubbles, and I'm adding them in vertical lines on both sides of my page. My texture paste is old, it's quite dry, but I'm still managing somehow to squeeze <laughs> it through the stencil and luckily it sticks very well, it works well, it is just very difficult to uh, spread and work with. I'm really fighting here, but thankfully I have a metal palette knife which helps. And then the paste needs to dry. Yes, a little bit more, I think, did yes. <laughs> okay, now while the paste is drying, I will be adding some other details to the background. You have seen me use this uh, technique quite often. When you take the stamp and use the same colors you used for the background to stamp the text, I choose I chose a text stamp which has these very uh, precise horizontal lines again just to repeat one more in one more way the same horizontal lines and I'm using purples and oranges to stamp the lines the text doesn't need to be readable it will just add some tiny little details to the background so now I need to color my bubbles and I'm choosing water soluble crayons in colors which resemble the colors that are already on my page so again some pastel purples and beige and this uh, teal color my water soluble crayons do not come from a very well known brand they are school grade they are made by this german company for children but they work absolutely fine and i see no difference with a very well known branded uh, crayons and the color choice as you saw is excellent so I'm using the purple on the and teal on the bottom of the page but I slightly go also on the other side on the top side and I will be using the lighter crayon on the top part but just for the balance also some bubbles I will color in the beige color on the bottom of the page and then I'm using water to help me to spread the color just a little bit and then I took the uh, deeper colored teal crayon to define the edge of my page it is easy to spread the color just with using finger because as you remember I used a gel medium to glue everything down so it makes the surface non-porous and the color just slides on top and I will be using a lighter color this orangey brown color to define the edge on the top part of the page and I'm g again I'm using the crayon to draw a line and then a finger, just remembering to use a different one, to not mix the colors, to spread the color on the top part of the page. 
these crayons are really joy to work with. They are soft and smooth and very pleasant to work with. And here is our focal point, our unicorn. <laughs> I will be using this real life unicorn for my page. And I printed it on a quite thick uh, paper on my printer. And now I'm cutting it out and you see these um, strange stripes on the tummy of the rhino. It is just my printer playing jokes on me. But I've decided to leave them uh, after all, this is an art journal page and it doesn't need to be perfect in any way. But I want my Rhino to be part of the page, so I'm going over the print with the same uh, inks again. I'm using the orange, the yellow, the purple and the teal just to div color in lightly, lightly some of the areas on my Rhino to make him more interesting. <laughs> and a pink nose. Yeah, got confused for a moment. Which one is yellow? Which one is orange? <laughs> oh, isn't he gorgeous? And I'm using a black um, acrylic pen to define the eye, the mouse, and, uh, and some other details just to not have them bleak and grey but to stand them out more, especially the eye. And since this rhino will be my unicorn, I want to do something special with his horn. So I am applying a thin layer of glue and I'm using an art glitter glue because it dries quickly. And then some golden and bronze colored uh, metallic flakes on top. So my unicorn will have a golden horn, even <laughs> if it is a rhino. And since I cut my rhino out of the paper, and it was quite thick paper, uh, it has this visible white edge, which I really do not like. So I'm putting the cutout on another piece of paper and I'm drawing around it with a very thick black marker but this way a very very thin line of the black color will also color the very thin edge of my paper cutout. I came here to the horn and since the glue is dry now I can use a soft brush to brush away the excess of the gold leaf and I can continue with drawing of my black line. Uh, the black line takes away the white edge and it helps the cutout to sit better in the page. Voila! Now I can use the same art glitter glue to glue my cutout to the page and I've decided to put my rhino straight in the middle of the page. And when I turn it, you will see how well the colors go with the background. Of course, I will give him a shadow to help him stand out a little bit more. But still, it will work very well together with the background. And to give the shadow, I'm using a charcoal pencil. I'm drawing a line around my rhino. And then I will be using a slightly damp brush to spread the black shadow a little bit more and not to have a harsh line but have it a little bit more smudged, a little bit more shadowy. So at the moment my rhino is floating uh, in the middle of the page so I decided to give him some grounding and I decided to borrow the idea from traditional unicorn paintings where they have this uh, 
flowery wreath around them and I made some flowers. I did not film the creation of the flowers that would make the video unnecessarily long, but I took an ordinary white paper. I took again the same inks, colored the patches of the paper, stamped uh, the flowers and then die cut them. And the only reason I'm using these flowers is because this is my only set where I have both the stamp and the corresponding cutting die. So I was just trying to save me some work. So I'm gluing these flowers in random order, but in this um, moon shape around the uh, base of my rhino. Uh, yes, in the middle, that purple greenish one uh, is left from one of the other projects. It was just sitting on my table, so I glue it in here too, because the colors go perfectly. So here it is, and I'm ready for the sentiment. And I cut the sentiment using these wonderful dies. I think these are the best letter dies in the market, which is um, this die from Paper Discovery. And it was created by Olga Direktorenko. And she had this great idea to give us a die where the most used letters are repeated several times. So I don't need to run the die through my die cutting machine endless times just to have one word. Very, very useful die. And I cut my sentiment from the black cardstock. Not the sentiment, I cut the letters and I'm piecing together the sentiment. And I will be gluing it down to my page using the same art glitter glue. So tiny letters need to work very carefully to glue them down. And I also cut out the exclamation mark. Even the point for the exclamation mark is including in this die. Of course I lost it, <laughs> but this was not a problem. I just used a black marker to paint a an exclamation mark and the dot. And of course it reads, I am a fat unicorn. So the idea for this page was that yes, unicorns exist. Yes, unicorns are real. And the real unicorns are fat. So the sentiment is almost done. All that's left is to draw in my exclamation mark with a marker. I'm using a white gel pen to give my unicorn some highlights. They do not change the image very much, but they do add some additional detail, which makes it more interesting. I'm sort of thinking that the light is hitting the rhino from the left, and I'm drawing these white lines where I think the light would hit, but I'm not being very particular or fussy about them, just adding some additional interest the image. And I went through the collection of my letters because I wanted to add one more word to this page. These are plastic letters and I'm gluing them down using the heavy gel medium. I'm just starting to glue from the end of the word to make sure that it is in the right place. So again, the real unicorns are the fat ones. <laughs> so, and here is the page. I do hope you enjoyed the process, you enjoyed the result, you liked the message. And I'm leaving you with some close-up images of this page. And I see you soon in the next episode. Bye-bye.